Good morning out there, YouTube land. It's John Gilkison, Aerostealth here. It is uh, Wednesday, March 8th, uh, 2023. And uh, I've been wanting to do this video for a few days, and I wrote a blog on it. Uh, it's about how to do an EV road tax fairly. And the reason this has come up again is because I was watching almost breaking news by Lou Allen, fully charged down in Australia. And the topic came up of a province they have down there called Victoria, which has put in place an onerous um, EV tax in order to discourage people from using or adopting EVs. And uh, <clears throat> so I've written on this in the past, <clears throat> but I wanted to clarify my thoughts on the subject matter and that's why the title of my blog is how to do an EV road tax fairly air quotes okay so first thing we have to get out of the way is a statement of purpose and the first premise is and I think a lot of EV owners get this wrong is that electric vehicles should support road infrastructure the same as any other vehicle that pay gas taxes. And if they don't, <clears throat> this creates some kind of envy. It's, uh, well, it's just not fair. I have to pay road taxes. Why don't those uh, elitist uh, electric vehicle owners have to pay road taxes? And that's right. Uh, however, the second caveat is that electric vehicles should not be singled out to pay taxes at a higher rate than a <coughs> commensurate uh, gas vehicle. So, and I'm just going to use New Mexico uh, in my example here because uh, it's what I know. We pay 18 cents a gallon on uh, gasoline here in the state to support road taxes. Now, it... <coughs> There is a question, is it enough? Uh, are road taxes um, on gasoline on, enough to cover the cost of uh, maintaining the roads? And that's a separate issue. That's a separate debate. If, if uh, gasoline taxes or road taxes need to be raised in order to be, <coughs> uh, in order to collect enough revenue to repair the roads, then they need to be raised. Also, this is another question, is is, is uh, taxing gasoline by the gallon the way to go on raising taxes? Excuse me, raising revenue for, for road re infrastructure. And, and again, that's a different debate. But given the system we now have, and I think the system we now have makes some sense, because it's a, it's a tax on energy consumption. In other words, every gallon you buy costs you 18 cents in road taxes. And so there's a big difference if you drive a Ford F-150 pickup truck 15,000 miles a year, and if you drive a, a Toyota Prius 15,000 miles a year. In the latter case, you're going to end up paying two, two and a half times more road taxes for, excuse me, for the Ford pickup truck than you would the Prius. And uh, so this is an important distinction. It rewards people who are more energy efficient. And I think that's a good thing. So I'm supportive of the <clears throat> of an energy tax to raise uh, road uh, revenues, uh, just for that reason alone. And um, anyway, um, so, now here's the most significant fact, um, with electric vehicles. There's something called a gallon equivalent in energy, electric energy, and that's 30, um, 33.7 kilowatt hours is equivalent to one gallon. So technically, you would want to say, well, for every 33.7 kilowatt hours, an EV owner 
sticks into their car, they ought to pay a um, 18 cent tax. However, the <clears throat> it takes more electrical energy than that <clears throat> to get 33.7 kilowatt hours of usable energy into the battery. And this is because of something called charging losses. And it's about 90%. With the level 2, 240 volt charging, it's about 90% efficient. So 10% of the energy is lost as heat in the conversion process. Now, some people level 1 charge at 120 volts, and that's even worse. That's 80%. So, what I figured, if you wanted to be bend over backwards a little bit and... and and you could claim you're being totally, totally fair to gas car owners. You could just round the whole thing off to 40 kilowatt hours. Now, actually, it could be argued that the average is somewhere around 39 point something. But between these two, however, I think we just need a round figure. And that works out to... Um, well, 33.7 works out to 0 0.0534 cents per kilowatt hour, which is, of course, a very awkward figure to use. Uh, that's why I want to round off to 40 kilowatt hours per gallon at 18 cents. Um, so when you do that, <laughs> took my Chevy Bolt, for example, which is, and you'd use the combined rating of the electric car. The EPA has three ratings, highway, city, and combined. So you just pick the combined one, which is in between those two, and it's uh, and you what you do is you have an odometer reading at, at the beginning of the tax year, and at the end of the tax year, you send in your odometer reading, and you pay, uh, <clears throat> let's say you travel 12,000 miles, and you're getting, in my car, the combined rating is 120 miles per gallon, which means I used 100 gallons equivalent. Okay? And, uh, so, what have I got here? So, would mean I'd use uh, 4,000 kilowatt hours. But anyway, 100 gallons equivalent is uh, 18, 18 cents a gallon times 100 is $18. And that's what you'd owe in your road taxes. Now, a lot of you would be saying here at this point, especially gas car owners, but John, it's... Uh, I pay about $90 a year in gas taxes. Yes, that's true. And that's because your car only gets 30 miles per gallon. If you had a Toyota Prius, you would only pay about 40 or $50 a year in road taxes. And if you have an electric car that gets 120 miles per gallon or whatever, then you're going to pay less. And that's as it should be. You should be rewarded for energy efficiency. You're not producing air pollution with your car, and you're using far less energy per mile than gas vehicles. And so you should be rewarded for that because you have less impact on the environment and less societal impact. So it's a pretty simple thing, really. Um, and that's what Victoria, for example, is doing. You take an odometer reading at the beginning of the year, and you take one at the end of the year. But when your taxes end up on an electric car being a couple hundred dollars a year, and a, and a gas car is only paying ninety dollars a year, this is ridiculous. The whole point of a, such a law would be to uh, discourage the adoption of electric vehicles, and it probably does work. Um, and because of that, it's uh, Let's say there's a revenue shortfall for the road taxes. So they say, oh, well, those damn electric cars aren't paying the road taxes. You know, and they're less than a few percentile of the total cars out there. <laughs> so we're going to 
we're going to raise the taxes on electric vehicles to such an onerous rate that no one adopts them. Well, you haven't solved your revenue shortfall uh, problem at all, and that was never your intent in the first place. Uh, so these laws are transparently uh, blatant attempts to suppress electric vehicle technology when they do that. What I'd like to see is laws that fairly tax electric vehicles at an equitable rate, and that would be on the same basis that gas cars pay road taxes. And that, of course, would be the per gallon rate of whatever it is, 18 cents in New Mexico, and another state is 20 or 30 or whatever it is. They need to pay it at that rate and only that rate. And uh, you have to take into account the charging losses. And so 40 kilowatt um, hours per gallon does that adequately. You could argue it could be 37. And I, and I would argue that it would be. But a worst case scenario, 40 covers everything. So there you have it. Uh, I'm putting this out there again because... It's a subject that just keeps coming up, and it's a gift that never stops giving, <laughs> because uh, it's always the Republican-led states or something that'll do something like this, and meanwhile, uh, liberal or, or uh, you know, progressive governments don't do anything at all, so they never address the issue, and that's wrong-footed. What, what we need is a position that says that all vehicles and all classes of people and all classes of vehicle need to be treated equally. And that's my proposal here. So take care, everybody. Happy motoring. Watch out for those electrolyne fumes. Bye-bye.